This is the Investor Connect podcast program. I'm Hall T. Martin. I'm the host of the show in which we interview angel investors, venture capital, family offices, private equity, and many other investors for early stage and growth companies. I hope you enjoy this episode. Interested in learning more about investing in startups, launching a new startup and need to raise funding? The Startup Funding Espresso is a daily podcast in a short, concise format delivered to your inbox every day, Monday through Friday. In the time it takes to drink an espresso, you can learn about startup funding. To subscribe, go to investorconnect.org and put your email into the pop-up box. Well, hello, this is Hall Martin with Investor Connect. Today we're here with Eric Tommy, director at Venture South. Venture South is an early stage venture firm that provides capital and expertise to Southeastern startups through the Angel Investment Network and funds. Eric, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Hall. Glad to be here. So what was your background before investing in early stage companies? What did you do before this? Uh, I had a winding road of career and entrepreneurship. Uh, So it was engineering and operations to business school and consulting, uh, then to entrepreneurship. Um, In 2012, started and bought uh, a company. And so it really got me into the entrepreneurship field and um, doing my own thing. Uh, the company I bought was a turnaround situation. That was a success every way except financially. So I did not quite get it turned around, but it was an amazing experience. And, you know, being forthright with that, uh, seems to have been you know, uh, a great way to connect with entrepreneurs and let them know, you know, how I also, um, feel the stress and the burdens that they carry as founders of companies. Um, and then um, got involved with Venture South in 2016, as that uh, as our angel investing network has continued to expand, looking to grow in the Charleston, South Carolina market. And so that's where I am now is growing our network, finding investors to join us as members and starting uh, and talking to startups to enter into our pipeline. Great. So what excites you right now? Uh, for me, it's the next deal. I love seeing the new, uh, the new thing come through, the new idea, the new company, the new leaders. Um, as much as I love digging in and learning um, in diligence or staying in touch with portfolio companies, I'm excited about the next one and just learning from what that could bring to us. Great. Well, you see a lot of startups and a lot of investors in what you do. What's your advice for people investing in startups? What do you tell them to do before they write that check? Uh, three P's is what I talk about and it's having uh, their own process for how they find uh, source deals and do their diligence and have their criteria. So as P is process, the other is portfolio. We know there's a lot of risk in investing in early stage startups. And so you need to balance that with a portfolio of investments and then patience. You know, these are not quick turn um, companies or investments. Uh, they need to have, you know, a few years to maybe a decade of patience to be ready to stay with the company. And then on the other side of that table, what's your advice for people running startups? What do you tell them to do before they go out to raise that round of capital? A few things. You know, the, typically the companies that are doing so well that they can't keep up with their own growth, they have the best time raising money, right? Um, and so if they focus on that customer, solving that customer issue and how that turns into revenue and uh, you know, driving their sales, um, they'll have a much easier time. They still need to run a, a right process. Um, and so I think they need to get out there and stay networked, build their advisor network. You know, uh, the adage that if you need to ask uh, or to, to get money, ask for advice and to get advice, ask for money. <laughs> you know, so start going out and building that advisor network early so that when you do need to raise money to keep up with this growing demand, you hopefully have in your hand some of your first angels and through their connections, uh, additional capital sources. Great. Well, that's good advice. So let's talk about the state of startup investing. How do you see the industry evolving here post-COVID? Post-COVID, um, it seems like there's still a lot of, it's a lot. It, it, there's more of everything. It seems like there's more startups at every stage and at every investable you know, stage and in the longer spectrum of um, easy, easy returns kind of profiles to fly by night, you know, risks shot in the darks, um, and a lot more attention from your average person. 
you know, sort of a shark tank effect. This is getting into the papers. People want to know what's happening in tech and how do they get invested. Um, and then some of the opening up of the SEC uh, regulations so that more um, non-accredited public crowdfunding sort of sources. So it's out there. And so um, I think there's some confusion with it of people wanting to know where do they play and where do they stand and how do they get involved that's right for them Um, because it's new for a lot of people. And then I think there's a lot of opportunity around it too, whether you're raising money or want to get involved as an investor. Um, But it's just a matter of, I think, doing the right homework to find out what's what's right for you. That's great. And so what is the biggest change you think we'll see in, say, the next 12 months? Um, So I think it's with more out there and more money, I think we see money moving upstream to, to earlier stage, more of the old school venture capital firms raising seed funds of huge dollar amounts. Um, Some interest into what that, what is that going to do to the market into valuations? It's probably a great time if you're raising money, if you have an idea. Um, But for investors, uh, again, I think it gets down to their homework and their diligence to know where they need to play. Great. So tell us more about your investment thesis and your criteria for looking at deals. What exactly are you looking for? We're looking for go-to-market companies based in the Southeast. They um, have a proof of concept, which, you know, if your customers are paying you, that's pretty good proof of concept that you are solving a problem for them and provide value. Um, That they have an amazing, um, vibrant team. It's not just one person that somebody has the self-awareness to know who they are and what they need. And they're driving that together towards an, uh, a great exit opportunity. That's something realistic. And they know they know what that might look at, right? So they have um, the data on who's making acquisitions and what sort of multiples in their market. Great. Can you talk about one or two startups that fit that thesis? Yeah, we've got a portfolio company within Venture South that's based here in Charleston. And they are raising again right now as they um, are continuing to grow uh, hiring some more senior uh, leadership uh, from different industries to really make um, a scalable solution. And so whereas before they might have been looking to add people uh, to provide services, um, their new CEO is uh, really sees this as a software and algorithm and a data um, company that can um, truly scale and have large scale implications with some major partnerships across the country. And, um, you know, has the eyes on the prize of getting in there and and growing for that opportunity just to exit. Great. So what do you think is the main challenge startups face today that you deal with? I think about this a lot on the personal level, you know, I've been um, running a company before myself and it's the balance. Uh, How do you balance the demands of a startup and the demands that you've created with your customers, demands of investors. And once you've taken money from someone um, beholden to that, along with their personal life and maintaining, um, yeah, hopefully family and personal interests. Um, I think it's a lot. And I think that too often we're expecting, we see and, and glorify the story of the people that work themselves too hard to get to results. Um, I think that's something in the short run, but in the long run, I like to see founders that truly have a great balance in what they do and can take that off to their team as well. And on the other side of that table, what's the challenge you see investors face in these times? You know, too often I see investors that get involved in our network and they don't invest. <laughs> and I think they don't put the effort into understanding how much of their portfolio would go towards a VC or early stage investments. And so they don't think like a VC that needs to deploy capital. So I help tell people the story of, you know, know what percentage of your investable capital uh, will go towards this, what size of a portfolio do you want to build over a certain period of time, and then divide it out. That's how many checks you need to write of a certain size and go find your opportunities. And so if you're not part of a angel network or some sort of resource to feed you deal flow and you have to go find it yourself, um, go Mm -hmm. go do that work so you can deploy capital. Otherwise, Mm -hmm. You know, if you're paying for a deal flow and you haven't, you're just waiting for inspiration to hit before you write a check, you're probably going to sit on your hands for a while and, and not be happy with your experience. 
Right. Well, you see a lot of different applications and sectors in the market today. If you had to put one or two at the top of the list for being really good opportunities for investors to pursue, what would you call out? Uh, so in subsectors and applications, you're speaking of like certain industries? Yeah, fintech and healthcare, blockchain, et cetera. <clears throat> Uh, I'm certainly interested in blockchain. Um, I don't see enough right now uh, coming through with sort of low code and no code uh, applications. I see still some traditional, you know, we got to pay a large developer or development team and do some um, traditional coding to create a product. Uh, I'm really curious to see what's going to happen with low code and no code to, and really I think it'll be more customer responsive. You know, if you have to build a big product to then fit in with different customers, um, I don't think it allows you to be as flexible. And so um, I, I haven't seen enough of this, but I'm very curious to see what, what more will come out of it. Great. And so in the last few minutes that we have here, what else should we cover that we haven't? Um, I kind of like to talk about some of the pros and cons of angel investing groups. Because with Venture South, we try to be very aware of some of the downsides and that angel groups um, can sometimes take too long. They're not transparent. They won't eventually write checks. Uh, we'll burden founders with too many requests and too much data. And we really try to work to be different, have a very solid process. It's professionally driven, um, have very transparent periods where we'll have communications and feedback and portfolio uh, reviews so that investors know what's coming up and can be prepared for their diligence and their questions. And especially for the founders of these companies, uh, they can reach out for help. You know, we know that there's uh, built-in communication periods. So all the challenges we know that they're gonna have, uh, they can have find times to reach out to us so we can help. Well, great, can you tell us more about Venture South? How big is the group today? Venture South, the whole network is more than 400 members today across the Carolinas and Virginia, along with remote, you know, this post-COVID world, uh, we're everywhere now. And so we've got uh, 16 different groups and affinity groups um, and four different sidecar funds uh, deploying probably about $10 million of capital and about 20 companies every year on average over the last few years and continuing to grow. And so we're uh, excited to have New investors join us because I think the more perspective at the table provides uh, for additional value. So here post-COVID, are you going to a hybrid model? Or are you going back to physical meetings? What do you see the future like there? I think we see a hybrid model where we got a lot of value out of the virtual meetings where it wasn't just one group in one city getting together. You got to have the insights of members from all over. Uh, and so a, a lot of value out of that, a lot of um, flexibility because we could record that and people could watch it at their own leisure. Uh, however, I think there's a great uh, social value and connectivity value, building relationships face-to-face. -face. And so we'll offer that on small scales as well. Here in Charleston, we'll get the members together to do due diligence reviews, talk about the open investment opportunities, um, share some of the education events along with the pitch meetings. So we'll continue to do that in person and then have our, our online options as well. That's great. Well, how best for listeners to get back in touch with you? Uh, for me, emails are the best. Eric at VentureSouth.vc. I get that all the time. Great. We'll include those in the show notes. I want to thank you for joining us today and hope to have you back for a follow-up soon. Thanks all. I appreciate it and look forward to it. Investor Connect helps investors interested in startup funding. In this podcast series, experienced investors share their experience and advice. You can learn more at InvestorConnect.org. Paul T. Martin is the director of Investor Connect, which is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to the education of investors for early stage funding. All opinions expressed by Hall and podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Investor Connect. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions.